Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP and I do not have any time to waste. We have a ton of things to cover in this video. Uh, we are going to be talking about this video. It is almost 10 minutes long. No, we are not going to be watching the entire thing. We only have to watch a quick segment. And I know that a lot of you were complaining about in my last video, the sound not working on certain devices. Um, I think it was the encoding on that video specifically but I also boosted up the gain on uh, the desktop audio for you guys. So hopefully that does fix a lot of things. Let me know how it does sound in the comments down below. Um, but let's talk about this video. I'm going to turn it up. Just beware, it is going to be a little bit loud. For anybody who does want to turn down their audio, go ahead and you can kind of adjust it now. I was having dinner with a friend not long ago in New York City. We met at a place called Oriol, which is in Midtown. My dinner companion that night was a senior advisor to BlackRock. As you may know, BlackRock is now the largest asset manager on the planet. It directly manages $5 trillion in assets, and it oversees another $11 trillion through its Aladdin platform. That means one firm controls more money than the GDPs of China, Russia, and Japan combined. Anyway, my dinner companion happens to work directly for BlackRock's CEO. As we nursed our white wine and the evening wore on, she let something slip. If I remember her words, she said something like, they want to tell us we can't sell. What was she talking about? Who was she talking about? I placed a few calls, first to my contacts in Washington, then to a few people on Wall Street. Soon I was on a plane for a series of meetings to London, to Geneva, back to New York, then down to South America. As I began connecting the dots, a pattern emerged. It revealed a network of more than 189 individuals positioned inside the world's major financial institutions. Some of them hold senior positions inside the IMF, World Bank, and every central bank in the G20, including our own Federal Reserve. These elites share one vision, and they're about to make it a reality. That vision is one world order, one world taxation, and one world money. They've worked for years behind the scenes preparing to realize that vision. They've literally rigged the laws of international finance. Everything is basically in place right now, and there's essentially no way to stop this from happening. When the crisis hits, they'll flip the switch, freezing the global financial system. That will give them time to reset the world economy according to their vision. As the coming crisis unfolds, President Trump will be powerless to stop it. In fact, trying to stop them would probably weaken the president's power altogether. That is, that, that, that. Now, I do understand that you guys are probably going to comment down in the comments saying, you know, this is when, you know, Trump was president, blah, 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 whatever. You got to understand these things do take time. And uh, remember, right, when we talk about the flip the switch event, it doesn't necessarily need to be Ripple or XRP. I've actually always talked about this, right? I've talked about the idea that like when that flip the switch event actually does happen, you know, does XRP need to be included? I mean, to me personally, I do believe XRP will be, you know, included. A lot of individuals have their own takes on this. I know that everybody has been talking about this for a while. To me, what the flip the switch event does mean is that we do transition over to a blockchain based financial system because the efficiencies are far too great to ignore. And why do I believe that XRP will play a pivotal role? Well, for you guys that don't know who this individual is over here talking in this video, this is Jim Rickards. Now, Jim Rickards, for the longest time, has been discussing a lot of these major plans behind the scenes. He also talked about XRP in the past, and we're going to get to that in a second. But I want you guys to understand the secret plan moving behind the scenes. These institutions have been in this game for a while. They have been controlling things for a while. That's why when we hear these you know, other individuals in the space saying, hey, BlackRock getting in on crypto is a bad thing, guess what? I hate to break it to you, but BlackRock has been a part of this situation for a very, very long time. If you actually think that they're just getting in now, you're completely wrong. And talking about that, we actually do have him discussing XRP in this uh, video. Now, this one is a little bit you know, smaller in uh, dimension, so you can't really see a lot that's going on. But here he is sitting over here. Uh, we do see here, uh, this is from JT underscore XRP. Stumbled upon a great discussion from a uh, few years ago about XRP, gold, and silver. Remember what I said, XRP will not be backed by gold. If anything, gold will be backed by XRP. Listen closely to this interview. You can do that with dollars. I mean, exactly. Yeah, you're right. You can do it with Bitcoin. Actually, you can't do it with Bitcoin. You, you pay fifty dollars for a two dollar right. cup of coffee, a fifty dollar right. transaction fee. You don't know what right. it's going to cost you in ten minutes. That, that's exactly. exactly right. but, but there so, are there are some cryptos that are working with regulators and are working with. Banks. I agree. Ripple right. would be an example. Ripple like, and I love the fact that they do say that they are working with regulators. They uh, regulators. They are working with banks. 
and, and again, they do mention Ripple, and it's funny, um, you know, what has unfolded since this. But uh, yeah, listen closely to this. Be an example, right. Now, this is a, and I can, I can imagine in the next five years, instead of us doing sterling against the dollar or sterling against yen and doing these kinds of transactions, we'll do sterling versus Ripple. And the reason being, dollar right now is a two day settlement. With something like Ripple, you could do settlement in seconds. And I think that there's a future there where the guy that's trading spot FX today will be trading spot FX against Ripple in the future, in the next two or three years. So I think that Ripple has a great future because it's right now supported by all the banks and by all the regulators. And it has an elastic monetary base, right? So, so well, if, it, if we take that, if we take that and, you, and you go to the and you go to the block, blockchain ledger, if you take that concept that, that you're discussing. I, I have no problem with it. I agree with it. But you're talking about money. You're talking about transaction, medium of exchange. There has to be something behind it, and that's where I'm going I'm to pull this conversation back to gold. There has to be some sort of reserve asset. The, the, the problem with fiat currencies right now is that they can print as much as they want, you know, digitally yeah. or whatever. They, they just, there's, it's not tied to anything. And so as a result, the value of the money can be... Um, Negated. It can, it, can, it can be destroyed well, over time. It, and it is destroyed over time. I think time. one of the biggest sales pitches that folks that enjoy Bitcoin talk about is the fact that it's finite. And yet you have a fork, and boom, here's another currency based off of this one. You have another fork, more currency, another fork, more currency. currency. The, Correct. Fact, the fact that it's finite it's, is it's totally totally finite. Is actually one of the worst things about Bitcoin. And it shows that really smart developers and really smart engineers don't know anything about monetary economics. Because if you understand monetary economics, you don't want hyperinflation, you don't want money everywhere, but the, the money supply has to grow a little bit. As the economy is growing, if the money supply doesn't grow and the economy is growing, that's inherently deflationary. Each coin is going to get you more and more because you've capped it out. Well, if it's deflationary, if you look at, uh, say, the dollar, you know, M0, M1, M2, you know, M3, etc., um, what you find is that most of the money in the world isn't really money, it's credit. Credit is what makes the world go around. People borrow, you know, if you have money and I borrow from you... And I and I like the fact that he does go on to mention credit and how everybody's like kind of borrowing money. Um, this is a big issue as well. Like liquidity is a big area. Now, I do also like the fact that they did bring up the fact that like, you know, XRP, like XRP does have a finite supply, by the way, as well. Um, but I don't believe that XRP will be like a reserve currency, how everybody, you know, does claim it to be. In fact, I actually look at XRP as a bridge currency. More so, and, and a lot of people kind of get confused when I do mention that. So let me actually explain that. So to me, the way that I look at XRP is that if we do move to a gold standard, which looks like we are moving towards a gold standard system where we do kind of go back in time uh, to the gold standard in quotation marks, if you will, around the financial sector where we do have a financial system backed by gold. Um, it still needs to rely on something that could be efficient enough to bridge it all, aka the bridge currency, the medium of exchange, as you will, um, which you know this individual does say over here. Now, when we look at this, right, what could the perceived value of XRP be? Well, it could be pretty high. Uh, we've actually talked about this even in regards to like an ESDR. And the funny thing is, again, when we look at this, here is Jim Rickards talking more so about people are saying is not my idea of a reliable source. That said, even the IMF needs devs. And I'm sure Ripple has some good ones. That doesn't mean XRP will be a reserve asset. Again, that's the that, that's the main case around XRP is like, all right, it's going to be a reserve asset. It's going to be a reserve you know, currency. I actually look at it as an ESDR as well, um, which again, you know, when we really kind of look at it, it still needs to have a pretty high, um, you know, value price on it. And again, like we actually do see, um, a, you know, it's like it's basically a response to his original tweet over here, which is talking more so about things happening with the IMF. Uh, we do see thanks for my reply, Jim. The company Ripple is working with 40 plus central banks and they are on the IMF task force. So people are saying that the digital asset will be XRP that Ripple uses. That will be, you know, coupled with the SDR for, you know, global liquidity. What are your thoughts on this? Again, when we really kind of look at an ESDR for global liquidity, aka that bridge currency, that's how I actually look at this. And uh, we do see like an asset free of political ramifications and highly convertible with uh, or would be ideal. XRP fits the mold. Once IMF announcement made plenty of value, uh, will be added, you know, to the asset. No need to hold, you know, several currencies uh, when holding the highly efficient deflationary XRP would suffice. Thoughts. And again, like a lot of individuals did kind of think about this um, in the past as well. They did make videos on this in the past as well, because this is from like 2018. Um, when we look at this, though, you know, when we look at like the special drawing rights in regards to like a lot of like the currencies within that basket, um, it is to pull liquidity. 
But if you actually get rid of all of that, free up all that capital and just have XRP be in the liquidity source, that on-demand liquidity source, that could you know substantially change the game. But you also do see a much, much higher perceived value. Now let's actually talk about this because I think that this kind of goes hand in hand with um, also Swift, right? Because that's the end game. A lot of individuals actually look at Swift and say like, all right, well, why do we really need Ripple if we already have like the Swift GPI? The Swift GPI is extremely inefficient as well. And I think that this all goes hand in hand with Volante Tech, um, you know, in regards to like what they are doing with the Fed. We do see Swift GPI is like putting a Ferrari shell on a Model T engine, Brad Garlinghouse. We've talked about this quote in the past. We do see Swift GPI is like putting a Ferrari shell on a Model T engine. It's a cosmetic upgrade on an old infrastructure messaging is still not tied to settlement. It's unidirectional and can't solve for liquidity. Now this is rapid transactions. Um, we still need rapid settlement tied to this. That's where we do see you know, XRP coming into play. This is where we do see on-demand liquidity coming into play as well. Now, what does all this mean for XRP's value, right? Because we've talked about XRP's value in the in the past. Um, you know, we've talked about how you get to the hundred to one thousand dollar price prediction. We've talked about the possibilities of the thirty-five thousand dollar you know price prediction. Now, do I think that a lot of those prices are you know possible? I do think that the low you know tier ones, like the one hundred to one thousand uh, dollar you know price predictions, I think that those are possible sometime in the future if we do see mass adoption of on-demand liquidity, or you know even if we do see XRP becoming like an ESDR, then the price could actually skyrocket even higher, um, and it could have a completely diverse you know title added to it. Um, but I do think that we are moving towards a pretty substantial system. I think that the new financial system is, you know, incoming. I do think that the flip the switch moment will happen uh, where we are possibly running on, you know, blockchain rails. And who knows what we are going to be utilizing at that point in time. But I do think that what we will see is a gold back system ushered in where we will need that medium of exchange, that exchange of value, a.k.a. Ripple, right? Swift is messaging me uh, mechanism and it remains only to the exchange of data. With Ripple, you are actually settling value. You are providing the finality and certainty of the payment. This is what we want, especially if you look at a gold back system. The issue with the gold back system going back in time, first off, they got rid of it due to, you know, manipulating the uh, financial system. They wanted to manipulate the system. They wanted to print money out of nowhere uh, because again, like that provides a major control aspect around it. But also the major issue with a gold back system is, you know, the ease of flow. You cannot transact easily. It's hard to transact easily. You want to be able to transact with as less friction as possible. Ripple solves that. XRP is going to be a major player in regards to a bridge asset. That's how I look at it. Now, of course, we could speculate all day long on the actual value of it. I don't want to speculate too much on the value, uh, but when we really kind of look at what is happening behind the scenes, things are moving pretty quickly. And uh, when we really kind of look at Swift, it is 100% outdated. Even the Swift GPI is outdated. And, and, and when we look at it, like, you know, a lot of people think that Ripple is going to replace Swift. Um, I actually don't think that that is the case. In fact, we actually go over here to um, Digital Perspectives tweet says, you know, Bank of China, US translation, Ripple needs to cooperate with Swift. Exporter solution needs to be backed by cash reserves and commodities. Yes, and I do think that that is the case. Like I think that this solution is going to need to be backed by more so a gold back system. I think that that is the end game here. And I do think that we are moving very quickly within that aspect as well, uh, where we will see a full on commodity backed, you know, financial system. Uh, we will kind of get rid of all of the inflationary aspects around it. And uh, I think that we are going to be moving pretty quickly within this as well. I, I would say, I would argue um, by around like 2025 to about 2027, if I had to put an actual timeline on it, uh, things are going to be revolutionized within this payment system. I think that this has been in the works for a while. Like I said, even going back to this video, this first video, you know, this is when Trump was president. So, you know, this has been in the works for a very long time. And uh, we do see them talking about Swift here, constrained by its traditional system structure. Swift remittances lack timelines and cross-border payment information chain is long, which is easy to cause information loss. The emergence of Ripple triggered the catfish effect, which caused a ripple in the field of cross-border payments. And uh, Swift accelerated.
accelerates the pace of innovation and change, launch new products such as Swift GPI Go, um, and will promote the ISO uh, 222 message format by the end of 2022. And uh, they do say, you know, when Western countries have taken SWIFT as an important tool to implement financial sanctions and the future cross-border payment system is whether neutrality, you know, can be maintained uh, will become one of the key trade-offs and the considerations for users. Ripple's a Native American, um, you know, a, a, a fintech company is inevitably subject to the influence of U.S. regulators. As a commercial bank, it should be carefully considered considering the absence of effective means to avoid the risk of SWIFT sanctions, whether using Ripple will step into another American trap. And again, like they do look at this. Um, in regards to, you know, it kind of being tied to the U.S. Um, but also when we really kind of look at this, I do believe that, you know, when we look at like Swift with Ripple, I think that these two will be working together. We actually do see down here, you know, Anders responding saying like, could Ripple and Swift potentially work together? The two technologies are largely complementary. And you can actually look this up just saying like, could Ripple and Swift work together? They 100% can. Um, and the, the reason why this actually can happen is when we go over here from Anderson, again, shout out to Anderson on uh, Twitter. If you guys do want to get a lot more XRP information, learn a lot more, incredible individual on Twitter, by the way, uh, we do see for anyone wondering, this is why Swift and XRP, you know, can be complementary. Also, the better and faster Swift messaging gets, the more value there will be in an instant settle uh, in settlement. Remember when we talked about Swift, right? Swift is transacting $5 trillion a day, but they, their underlying settlement mechanism is still extremely inefficient. Yes, the Swift GPI is great for, you know, rapid, you know, transactions, but again, the settlement, you know, itself is very inefficient. We do see Swift equals messaging slash payment, XRP equals transfer of value settlement inside the Swift transaction. Swift is a messaging network that financial institutions use to securely transmit information and instructions uh, through a standardized system of codes. Although Swift has become a crucial part of the global financial infrastructure, it is not a financial institution itself. Swift does not hold or transfer assets. Rather, its utility lies in the power to facilitate secure, efficient communication between the member institutions. And uh, yes, like when we look at this, like it's not going um, you know, to just replace Swift. Like even, you know, we do see down here, like why not just replace Swift? How many decades would that take? You got to remember there's 11,000 banks tied to Swift. We are not going to overtake Swift in a day, a year, five years, even 10 years. It's going to take quite a long time. Remember, even XRP itself with Ripple has been around for nearly a decade, or I think it's actually over a decade now. So when we actually look at this, like this has been in the works for a while. You know, Ripple has been working on this disruption and this revolutionary technology for a very long time. How long has this new financial system been in the works? Call it speculation if you will, but you know, we have all of the major connections. We have all of the major information to back this. And also, yes, when we talk about Volante, I do think that Volante is a pivotal player within this. Going back to July 2021, we did see Ripple Visa B2B, Swift GPI, Crypto CBDCs, a guide for the perplexed. And this really kind of just talked about cross-border payments in general. You know, cross-border payments are pretty large. And we do see down here that according to a recent study by the um, AT Group in association with Volante, cross-border payments revenues are expected to grow 20% to over $260 billion by 2025. It doesn't talk about the global market of cross-border payments, which is $156 trillion in value. And they actually do expect this to grow to $200 trillion plus by, I believe it was 2025. So when we actually look at this, this is a very large market to fully disrupt. And I do think that Ripple is at the core of this. But also when we talk about like the new financial system, you know, how could we usher into a revolutionary, t you know, um, I would say financial system uh, without something like Ripple with XRP? I know that a lot of people don't think that the XRP mechanism behind like on demand liquidity is that revolutionary but it actually is because not even swift has solved the inefficiencies behind instant settlement behind liquidity liquidity is the big deal here and we actually do see them talking about swift gpi you know that we, we do see down here like one of the advantages of swift gpi is speed 92 percent uh you know of end-to-end -end cross border payments are completed within 24 hours within 24 hours now, I know that that seems like quite a bit of a, you know, major deal. And we actually do see like, wow, 40% of them are credited within the first 30 minutes. Like, I know that this seems like a big deal, but compare that to a three to five second settlement time on Ripple. That's a major difference. Remember, in a world that is transacting 24-7, 365 a year, right? We want to have things settled instantly. We don't want things hung up for 30 minutes, 24 hours. We don't want things to be extremely high cost. 
We want things to be as quick as possible, as secure as possible, as transparent as possible. This is why we actually look at the Ripple you know, underlying technology. We do see Swift GPI provides full visibility of the transaction fees without any data loss, helping banks achieve transparent, traceable, and predictable end-to-end -end transaction monitoring. They have solved quite a bit here, but they still do not have the instant settlement down. Hence why Anders is saying, you know, Swift equals messaging slash payment. Transfer of value settlement is XRP. The settlement is the big deal here. I know that a lot of people don't think that settlement is actually a big deal, but it is a very, very large deal for these major financial institutions. Remember, there's 11,000 of them tied to Swift. And they do mention Ripple down here. Like, you know, it is the DLT-based uh, global real-time settlement mechanism. It offers banks a faster and more cost-effective mechanism to make international payments in, in any fiat currency with associated, you know, settlement. Also, when you actually look at the, you know, fees compared to even SWIFT, we are absolutely killing them on every single base point. And it doesn't mean that we have to compare them like that. No, we actually look at the complementary technology behind it. Funny enough, there's also this AT, uh, like this AT um, PDF file from Volante. This actually has a full-on breakdown. And yes, this is their partner um, advisor and even catalyst sort of, uh, you know, prepared PDF file. They do talk about quite a bit in this. Um, they even talk about like the executive, you know, summary. And it, all we really need to do is read a little bit around this, but then we can check out like the Ripple, um, you know, talks within this entire breakdown. There's only three uh, mentions of Ripple within this, but they do talk about like the revolution going on behind the scenes in regards to like payment innovation. So we do see payments innovation is at an all-time high in the financial industry. The reality of real-time frictionless payments has led to expectations of a better payments experience for all payment methods and types, including cross-border payments. Globalization continues to drive a higher volume of cross-border payments and a larger number of businesses that have a need to send these transactions. There is also a significant revenue to be gained by providing cross-border capabilities. Next generation cross-border solutions that minimize the inherent friction of the correspondent banking model are desired by businesses and their recipients. Not offering a more efficient way to make these payments will become increasingly detrimental for banks seeking to uh, service these clients. Message standardization, utilizing the ISO 2022 messaging format is a key component in improving cross-border payment automation and providing a foundation in developing interoperable services across geographic lines. Vendors and technology solution providers are utilizing cloud-based payments as a service pass offerings to help banks more easily offer improved cross-border payment services to their business clients. This is leveling the playing field for banks that have historically been dependent only on their correspondent banking relationships to provide cross-border pay, uh, payments capabilities. Again, a full-on breakdown, they are really kind of just talking about the revolution to the cross-border payment market. I know that they are talking more so about this in regards to like billions, 261 billion by like 2025. This market is much larger than what they are letting on here. The, this is just revenue from the actual market. In it, When you actually look at the cross-border payments totaled $130 trillion, it generated $224 billion in revenue. But if we actually look at what you know, Ripple is, you know, really kind of, I would say disrupting here is that, you know, revenue cycle for these major names. This market is well over $200 trillion by 2025. Currently, it's sitting at about $156 trillion. So actually disrupting this market at its core is not going to generate the $156 trillion for XRP to go after. It's actually going after, you know, the major intermediaries that are playing a pivotal role by siphoning money out of the payment flows, making the you know, payments themselves or the transactions themselves extremely, you know, inaffordable for SMEs, for example. Now, we do see down here, you know, using historical data of this revenue and expended need uh, beyond limit, you know, limited high value, high uh, dollar transactions, AT Group predicts that the revenue opportunity for banks and payment providers will continue to grow unless they get disrupted at the core. Now, um, these are all, you know, from like FX rates. And this is why, like we say, like, you know, XRP, or I should say Ripple going after this market at its core is going to put a lot of eyes on the project and it is going to cause, you know, some concerns, especially from those major, you know, names. These are major banks, by the way. Um, but when we look at where, you know, Ripple is positioned on this entire, you know, PDF, we do see existing and emerging cross-border payments initiatives. We do see, you know, a few ones here. Uh, you do see Swift, Swift GPI. Uh, you do see a full on, you know, central infrastructure based like SEPA, Instant, you know, Buna and things like that. Uh, you do see blockchain based, Ripple, Visa, B2B, Connect, MasterCard, Track, which we did talk about these other two. Uh, they're inefficient compared to what Ripple is offering here. And you do see like a whole, you know, a bunch of other ones, like even Western Union, which is laughable that they even made it onto this list i tried to do 
like one day, like our um, online payments for like rent was out and I had to go to Western Union for a money order. They wanted to charge me like $300 for a money order because of the amount that I had to pay for rent. It was laughable. Um, but nonetheless, we actually do see, you know, them mentioning a few things around here. Payments can settle in real time without dependence on card numbers or intermediary banks. Again, cutting out that, you know, middleman, that's going to cause some issues. I kind of almost look at this like, you can almost look at this as like a um, sort of a mob breakdown. Like you have these intermediary banks that are like, you know, the mob bosses. So they're going to send out their henchmen to, uh, you know, undercut you. So, you know, just kind of give you guys an insight. Like that's how I kind of look at this. But they also do mention again, uh, Ripple here. They also do mention Currency Cloud, which is funny because Currency Cloud has some, con uh, some connections to, uh, you know, Ripple. But they do talk more so about like cross-border services in general. Um, and then last but not least, they do mention just, you know, Ripple down here yet again in regards to like the about Volante technologies. They talk about, you know, the next generation networks such as like Ripple, Visa, B2B, Connect, and Visa direct etc um, but i figure that this was a pretty good pdf just to kind of give you guys a quick insight on what is actually happening behind the scenes in regards to like you know financial modernization and payments innovation and uh, i give you guys one last major connection here which is the connection to uh swift with ripple they already do have a patent in place and a few people have talked about this for an example like xrp owl has talked about this in the past uh shout out to riz xrp for this but yes there is already a patent around this with you know swift with xrp and uh this goes back a little bit in time to like 2018, I believe. Um, and yeah, so like the original actual priority for this was 2015 application filed uh, by Identity um, going back to 2016. And then the, it got published uh, in 2018 and then uh, application granted in 2021. So this is still in the movements um, and it is going to expire in 2037. But we do see computer implemented method for processing and financial transaction and system. Therefore, um, you do see like all of the major inventors behind this. And then on the next slide, we do see um, a few things here. So settlement gateway of pairs bank sends by way of non-limiting example, XRP, the native currency of the Ripple protocol to Biller's bank gateway, uh, pairs bank gateway notifies uh, token database. And then over here, we do see, you know, a way of non-limiting example, XRP, the native currency of Ripple protocol to Biller's bank gateway. So they're just more so looking at it as a gateway settlement token here across multiple, uh, multiple institutions and banks with reference to, you know, figs. And uh, they do kind of break this down a little bit more in depth. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's more so kind of talking about it as a major, you know, bridge currency or it's a payment gateway or if you will, like uh, we always look at it as just like a, you know, bridge currency. Do I think that this is pretty big? I mean, like this could very well uh, be the thing that really kind of, I would say pushes XRP to mass adoption from the banking sector. Because remember, if Swift is going to utilize XRP as a settlement token, uh, which is like the end goal, right? Like we've actually seen, um, you know, David Schwartz talk about like, it is the end goal to have them fully adopt in um, XRP. That's the end goal that, you know, David Schwartz has always talked about with, you know, Swift utilizing XRP, which would connect it to the 11,000 financial institutions utilizing, you know, Swift, uh, you know, payment network. That would be huge. Remember, like $5 trillion moving over XRP on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, you could probably expect the volume and the value of XRP to drastically increase. Um, we don't know exactly what that would be. You know, a few people have calculated in the past. I even have calculated in the past. It would be substantial. Um, but a lot of people do have their doubts. Like, you know, with on-demand liquidity, it is, you know, push through um, on-demand liquidity, utilizing XRP as that settlement token. And then instantly after it is sent out. Um, but the end goal here is to have those, you know, major players, those intermediaries, if you will, um, or those major transaction, you know, banks, to hold XRP in a substantial amount of XRP. So you take all of the supply out, you push the demand up, the price of XRP is significantly higher. Again, we can speculate easily on the price of XRP. We could talk about $1,000 XRP, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000. Is it great for views? Is it great for, you know, a lot of eyes on, you know, the videos and, you know, for me to gain subscribers? Yeah, sure, it really is, but I do not want to give you guys um, an insight on like what I think the value would be of XRP because I don't want to give you guys this, you know, hopium based price perspective um, like I have in the past. And 
do I feel bad about doing that? No, because I kind of give you guys my insight on how I think we could see the perceived value of XRP being, you know, targeted at some of these higher figures. Do I believe that we're going to see a monetary buyback on XRP from the Fed? Absolutely not. I don't think any of that is realistic, and I don't think that anybody should be getting caught in that, you know, hopium, uh, you know, trap. To me, when we look at XRP, and when we look at the end goal around XRP, I look at it as a settlement bridge token. And yes, I do think that if we could get it to the ESDR rate, the value of XRP could easily be within the three to four digit, you know, spectrum. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It was a very long one. Um, but if you guys did enjoy this video, definitely hit that like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all have a beautiful day, a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.